Hello everyone, glad you tuned in. The prophetic word for this month is pneumatic resonance. I'm sure you will be blessed as you join the worship. In this place, let your healing come. In this place, I call the signs and wonders. In this place, let your presence flow.
pay attention to the following information. And God bless you as you listen and participate to them. The church has two services lined up each and every Sunday. The first service starts from 10 a.m. to 11.30. The second service starts from 12 noon to 1.30. You're welcome to join us with your family and friends. Counseling with Pastor Chris Areme takes place each and every Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m. Please register with the church secretary, Sister Deborah Arunu, in advance. Bible study. Grow in the word with our Bible classes every Wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m. There is also the possibility to join us online. The link will be posted on all our social media platforms. Women's Prayer Meeting. Women's Prayer Meeting holds every Friday from 6 to 7 p.m. For more information, contact the Women's Leader. The Youth of UCC. The Youth of UCC meets every Sunday morning from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. and every second Friday of the month from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Every youth is free to join and invite their friends too. Moving on to the prayer intercessors. The prayer intercessors meet every second and third Saturday of the month. Question and answering. There is the opportunity for personal interactions as we tackle problematic issues and provide biblical answers in our Q&A sessions. This takes place every last Sunday of the month. Don't miss out. Night video takes place every last Friday of the month from 11 p.m. to the next morning. And Testimony Sunday takes place every third Sunday of the month. And lastly, the venue for all our church activities is the Church Auditorium. Please visit our website at wwwdocc stuttgartde We wish you a fruitful week and stay blessed. Praise the Lord. Are you glad to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? We thank God for His grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, this morning we are going by the way of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and 19. Um, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. And then Luke chapter 1, verse 26 till 28. Isaiah 48, verse 18 and 19. Please let us stand up for the reading of the word of the Lord as we dash into the word of the Lord this morning hallelujah remember ye not the former things that's what the word of the Lord says neither consider the things of old behold I do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall ye not know it even I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert Luke chapter 1 verse 26 and 28 from 26 to 28 gospel according to St. Luke and in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin exposed to a man whose name is Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary and the angel came in unto her and says, Hail thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women. See that salutation again. Let us read it together as a whole family. I'm talking about the verse 28. Let's read together. Ready, go. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou art hardly favor the lord is with thee among women spirit of the living god have your preeminence in this place give us entrance into your word let your name be glorified and your purpose be fulfilled open our eyes to see and also enlarge our capacity to receive so that your name be glorified in jesus mighty name we pray somebody shout hallelujah I'm bringing you the word of the Lord by the subject this morning. Get ready for the new. Get ready for the new. Um, this particular individual was um, born on the 30th of October 1960. And um, an Argentinian professional footballer player and manager widely regarded as one of the greatest player of his time he was one of the 
two joint winners of the five or player of the 20th century award the name by Diego Armando Maradona which passed away this last uh, Wednesday the 25th of November 2020 he was known for his skills of uh, ball controlling and dribbling skills and combined with his small stature, is able to do a lot of things. He will often dribble and pass multiple opposing players on a run. Many of us have watched him on the television and over the years, I'm talking of the ones that uh, are not a teenager because when you're over 20, you might be able to understand what I'm saying even much more. Even someone like myself that is not really interested in football that much, I know about Maradona. Maradona is a big name that even Nigerian singers sing about him. African singers, even all the way to Asian singers and American rappers have used him even in their singing and in their lyrics. This man was married with a longtime fiancée, Claudia Villafane, on the 7th of November, 1989. And they have two girls, Delma and Guineana. Even though this man, with all that he has gone through, still the Lord has been gracious unto him and is grateful for that being a Catholic. He's also a grandfather from 2009. But things started going down the hill because this man that was married in 1989 divorced in 2004. And then there was out of wedding child, Diego Sinagra. The only boy that was having his DNA, but actually not from his own immediate family was given to him by another lady from Italy. And this case went on and on until DNA text was in requested. But he says no. But later on, he confined it and says, well, this boy looks like me. Every detail shows that he's my own child. As I'm talking right now, the only boy which is not from his own wife is a football player. Things happen in life at times that doesn't go the way it needs to go. But God is a God of mercy and grace that is able to demonstrate his ability even in the midst of chaotic situation. I'm not saying anyone that is listening to me online or sitting down here should go out of their way and do things that are wrong. But I'm just trying to say that you can look back into your past no matter whatever has happened wrong there, God can still use that situation to bring glory to his holy name. I say God can turn your past around and create a new season. In the matter of fact, I'm believing in this season that we have entered into. Today being the first advent in 2020, that God is about to take you to another dimension. God is about to start a new season. This season shall change your life forever. I said this season you have entered into shall record a new uh, grace upon your destiny. Whatever you are going to uh, experience from today on will change your history and your past. And forever your life will be new. I wish somebody to say a better amen on that. After he divorced, this man also start having financial issue in march 2009 the italian official announced that maradona still owned the italian government 37 million dollars in local taxes 23.5 million of which was accord interest of his original debt so each and every year, interest is going over his debts. That this man, which is actually a world player, 
is having financial breakdown. He's losing everything. It got so bad in a situation that this man was engaged in drugs. Was engaged in drugs even while he was going up the hill. While he was shining, he was having difficulties. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, when you see successful people, there are issues in their life they are dealing with. So everyone that you're sitting down or looking at or you might have to come in contact with, there are issues in their life that is not solved yet. And God has the ability, if you are able to humble yourself and say that I need a help, Lord help me in this my situation, grace will be released concerning your life. And whatever you are dealing with, God will take you through it. I'm believing God in this season that whatever you are fighting while you are going the ladder of success, that the mighty hands of God will help you to get out of that situation and be able to strengthen you to be able to deal with it in the mighty name of Jesus. It's only four people that I see going up the ladder of success. I said as you are going up the ladder of success, whatever is going to bring you down, God will give you grace to be able to choke it. In the mighty name of Jesus, going up the hill of success, Maradona was dealing with drugs. The, uh, the information about him from the middle of 1980 until 2004. Listen. From the middle of 1980, some of you are not born, uh, up till 2004, Maradona was addicted to cocaine. He allegedly began using drugs in Barcelona 20, uh, 1983. By the time he was playing for Napoli, he had a full-blown addiction. That means he cannot do without sniffing, which interfered with his ability to play football. He did not drop football because of the fact that he was getting too old. He had to drop football because of what he desired become an addiction and start to destroy his life gradually. Sometimes in our life, what we want is not what is helping us. And if you don't negate the things that you want, you might not get into the things God wants for you. I'm praying for people that are here today, that in this season that we have come into, what we want will not destroy God's plan for your destiny. I said it will not become an addiction for your purpose. In the mighty name of Jesus... Mary had an encounter six months after another encounter. Mm. The first encounter that we find in the book of Luke happened in the life of Elizabeth. Happened in the life of Elizabeth. I'm no more following actually the sequence of my presentation. But I just feel the spirit of the Lord to go this dimension in which I am. And later on, I might have to come back to my presentation. Was in the life of Elizabeth. Elizabeth was a woman which was old married to a man that was serving God. Serving God and their situation remained the same. They were not having breakthrough where they needed. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, you can still serve God. And still undergo situations which are not beautiful. You can serve God and still go through trials in life. The fact that you are going through trials in life did not mean that God has negated you. Didn't mean that God has forsaken you. It only means that God is about to do with you something he has not done with someone else before. He's only saying that God is about to do to you more than you expect for yourself. Is only going to say that whatever is not happening now, God wants to make it to happen to the highest level. God wants to take a glory in your testimony. God wants your own situation to be better than the ones that you have seen around you. Am I having an amen in the house? Elizabeth 
and Zacharias. The Bible says Zachariah was a priest and was doing his duty. You can keep on doing your duty and still you are not having a breakthrough. But that doesn't mean that you need to stop. The day you stop in your duty is because of the fact that you cannot see the possibility. Keep moving, keep going. Because you are closer now than you have ever been before. Let me use that to encourage somebody in the house of the Lord. Or somebody watching online. Keep praying, keep fasting. Keep doing whatever you need to do. Keep on becoming part of the workers in the kingdom. Keep on doing what God has laid in your hands. Because before you know it, God is going to surprise you. I don't know who God is bringing surprise for. But I believe God in this season. God is about to visit somebody. And that visitation will change your lifestyle. If that is you, say a better amen on that. Ah! If God has given Zacharias a son before the encounter, you will name him Zacharias. Huh? Am I still here? He will have named him Zacharias. Zacharias is a good name. Is a theophoric masculine given name of the Persian and also of the Hebrew origin. Zacharias means God remembers. Say after me, God remembers. I pray that God is going to remember you today. I said I pray that God is going to remember you today. Whatever you feel that God has forgotten concerning his prophecy over your life, may the Lord remember today. May your reckoning be brought into the archive of heaven. May the throne of Father read your own prophecy today. As I'm prophesying over your life, let that prophecy come to manifestation. Please say three amen to it. Zacharias means God remembers. It comes from a Hebrew word, Zakar meaning remember yah is the name of the lord so zaka yah god remember oh my lord ah yeah 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 so he was going through his duty asking for god's remembrance but what happened on one day you know when it was his own time to come into the temple the Bible said he had an encounter. The encounter was spoken to him that God is on his own calendar is about to shift. Could it be that this pandemic is God wanting to shift? That there is a new calendar in heaven that God is about to find its expression on earth. And God wants to use this. I don't say pandemic is from God. I'm just saying God is going to use this moment of this pandemic situation to bring forth his new calendar. And God is looking for candidates. And I believe God is going to use me. You better pray for yourself. That God is going to use me to be part of the people that is going to bring forth his calendar upon the face of the earth. So shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Angel said, we've heard, we've heard your transgression, we've heard, sorry, your inquiries, we've heard your daily devotion, we've heard your prayers. God remember me, God remembered you. And he came to him and told him what is about to happen. And that so much scared him, he asked for a sign. And the sign was, you will be dumb, not able to speak until it comes to pass. Why would angel do that? Why would angel that is going to visit Mary and Mary's mouth is papa, 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 papa? Came to the man and his mouth was shut. Actually, I, I, if I could uh, 
make a choice i'm very sorry for everyone that is in this place and everyone watching online if i could make a choice i will make the mouth of the lady to be short and you know what i'm talking about i know we have many ladies in the house i'm very sorry because ladies in their natural form they talk a lot is that not true and men in their natural form they are very silent in themselves and i would have shut up the mouth of the lady some ladies in the house are already shaking their head and say pastor i i don't talk that much i'm just saying naturally this is the cliche that ladies talk a lot and yet men always quiet but god god that is not a man you see now i'm just saying about my own because I'm a man. God that is not a man says the man that is shutting up whenever he talks in the small window when he has opportunity to talk he might be talking nonsense. We are asked the lady that is speaking all the time every time he's speaking is speaking the oracle of God. All the ladies that were shaking their hands are now smiling back to me okay okay now now we, we, we can work with our pastor we we can work with that praise the lord please follow me and then the man's mouth was shut for whatever reason we do not know we don't know how god could open the eyes of a donkey and his mouth to talk and he shut the mouth of a man who is a priest <laughs> You see, when God does things, it's, it looks mystery. But there is a purpose and a reason why he does what he's doing. He's doing it because he's about to fulfill something. He's about to shift the time. And he made Zachariah to be dumb until the time comes to manifestation. And he says, the name of this child shall be called John going to leave you without any information this morning john means yahweh is gracious john in hebrew is yohanan yohanan and yo is coming from yahweh or jehovah hanan is gracious or grace God remember me was Zacharias. But when the word of the Lord came, he says, God is gracious to you. You see, you see, you see, when we stick into the old fashion, we might not be able to embrace the new season. Because most of us, we are still praying, God remember me. And we are as God has already shifted. So God has been gracious to you. Oh, I just spoke to somebody's situation. You are wanting God to remember you. And this is the time not to be praying God remember me anymore. But to be saying, God, you are gracious unto me. <laughs> yeah, hey. The gracious God was about to appear. In the life of Zachariah and Elizabeth. And Zachariah would have missed the whole shift. If he continues speaking Zacharias, Zachariah language is no more needed. There is a new shift. The new language of heaven is Yohanan. God is gracious. Ah! In, this, in the middle of that whole situation, the man went back home down gave the information to the to the wife the wife <laughs> the man was the one that had encounter the wife is the one that was the receiver the man had an encounter oh lord have mercy the wife was the receiver 
you see somebody is going to have an encounter and that encounter is going to ricochet back to your family there are some people in your life that they need to know God and if they did not see the hand of God they will never know that God is able but because of your encounter with the Lord God will visit your home okay okay it seems you are not getting me you will get me in a minute and the wife did not only receive, the wife knew that the time has changed. The wife gave birth to the child and will not call the child, come on now, talk back to me Bible scholars. It will not call the child Zacharias. Question, is there anywhere in the Bible where Zacharias told the wife the name of the child? There was no place how can he even converse huh since his mouth is short and dumb and then when she gave back to the child the woman says this is the name of the child everybody in the family of the husband says not so we shall call him Zacharias. The woman says, my, wife, my husband, <laughs> my husband might have had the visitation, but I am a carrier of the manifestation. I wish I have somebody in this place today that says that I am the carrier of the manifestation. Please say after me, I am the carrier of the manifestation. So they came and say, John, John, we so there was a there was a problem in the house. Choir, you can sit down, please. Sorry, making you need to stand. You might be going here and there. I'm just flowing as the spirit of the Lord is flowing this morning. So there was a controversy. There was an argument, and you know what it is when you have to argue with in-law, who is married here. God help you. I say, God help you. It doesn't matter if your in-laws are nice or not nice. But if you have to argue issue with your in-law, God help you. You know what I'm talking by now. They might, they, they will abuse you. The abuse that you have never even received from your parents. When in-law shoots you with it. You will go home and cry. It has always been. It's not a new thing. It has not just dead. It has, it has dead. That is a pidgin English. I'm very sorry for everyone watching online. That speaks very clear English. This issue has dead. Let us take pidgin English to the highest level. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Brother Ken, because he's an English professor. So, it has stayed for people to look into the issue and argue with you and even start cursing you out. In the midst of that, God opened the mouth of Zacharias. God is about to open the mouth of some people. Ah, some people that will speak on your behalf. That whatever you have been saying is not stupid. That you have not lost your mind. That the dreams and vision God has given to you. That they are authentic, they are real. And God is about to do it for you. And they will, go, they will surround you to make it happen. If you are that person, say, I am that person. Three things I want you to look into. I'm going to deal with only one in this service. And in the second service, I will be able to go to two or three. Three things, three steps for you to enter into the next season. Number one, follow the inner voice. Oh my Lord. Everybody is speaking, but not everybody has something to say. Many people are talking, but not everybody is speaking to your own destiny. Am I talking here? Three steps into entering the next dimension. Follow the inner voice number one. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 6. 
Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Hallelujah. It says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto your understanding. In all ways acknowledge him and he shall do what? He shall direct thy path. Say, direct me, Lord. This journey of life, huh? This thing we call life is a journey. It's a movement. It's not a static position. Huh? It's a movement. That means what happened yesterday is not going to happen today. That means whatever condition you find yourself is not permanent. It doesn't matter if it's good or evil. Don't say amen yet. This thing we call life, believe me, if you are over 30, by now you should know it is a moving thing. You just need to know what to do in every area of your life and in every season of your life. Whatever you do in every season of your movement determines the grace over that particular time. Whoever you listen to in every season of your life will be determine what you are going to become. Whoever you listen to, whoever, it doesn't matter if it's God or dog, whoever you listen to determines what happens. Inner voice. Listen to the inner voice. Mary listened to the inner voice. It became for her. Says to, she said to, to the angel, he said, let it be unto me as you have spoken. What would have happened if Mary rejected it? Do you think she will still get pregnant? No. The inner voice that Zachariah had went into the womb of Elizabeth. His mouth was shut because he might be saying nonsense in the process and dilutes that message and abort John. Inner voice. Inner voice is so powerful. It's the one that is determining your life. It is not what people are telling you that makes you to become you. It is what you tell yourself. Whatever you tell yourself you are going to become, and you can only be that by what you speak to yourself. Listen to what you tell yourself. Are they good or evil? As people are sitting down here, I might preach and prophesy over your life. After you go outside there, what do you say to yourself? Whatever you say to yourself after the church is over determines what you are going to become tomorrow. Not what I preach. That's the reason why people come even for, for, for service, for programs. They have an encounter. The man of God lay hands on them. They prophesy. They slay on the floor. And nothing changed afterwards. Why? Because they speak king or that thing to themselves immediately they woke up. inner voice what are you telling you psalm 37 verse 23 the step of a just man are of a good man are ordered by the lord and he delighted in his ways god is the one ordering your steps i say god is the one ordering your steps I say God is the one ordering your steps. I say God is the one ordering your steps. The reason why I'm saying it again and again, so that you will know that from today on, no step you will take except it is ordered by the Lord. If God is not ordering it, you will not step it. I prophesy and I speak over your destiny. If God is not going that direction, you will not go that direction. Heavenly Father, we ask you today everyone online that have not given their life to Jesus as they connect that they will have an encounter with you everyone on the ground we have an encounter with you everyone in this place that has had encounter before but they are law, like their life stopped and got stuck by whatever you said then 
but not able to discern what you are saying now. The first encounter Abraham had was take your child to the mountain and sacrifice. But God in the new season says, you don't need to kill him. Look into the bush. There is a ram caught in the ticket. If Abraham followed what was said, he would have killed his child. And God would have said, I didn't send you. Because he did not understand the new revelation. May you understand the new revelation of your destiny. God told Moses, take the rod, the rod in your hands and look to the mountain and speak to it. Look to that rock and speak to it and water will gush out. Moses went with the mindset of the last word he had and went and struck the rock. And Moses, because of that, could not enter the promised land. Why? Because he was still in the past revelation and missed the present instruction. May you not miss the present instruction. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Jam those heads together for Jesus. I said together for Jesus. Wow, what an incredible service. Thank you so much for watching. If this has blessed you, then join our BOCC family. It's just one click away. Wherever you are, grab your family and let's make this an every week situation. And moreover, share this and bless someone around you. Feel free to visit our BOCC website and social media platforms. Thanks again and I wish you a beautiful week.